What's going on everyone? I'm back here with another video for you guys today. Uh, and today I'm going to be giving you guys a look at the new changes uh, in iOS 7 Beta 2, uh, which was released, I believe, earlier today. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. And, by the way, uh, this update is an over-the-air update, so uh, for those of you running the iOS 7 Beta 1, uh, you can go ahead and jump into settings and uh, start downloading the update from the update tab. <clears throat> so you're not uh, forced to do it through iTunes. So, the first really big change uh, is the fact that Apple has brung back the Voice Memos app, uh, as you can see here. So we now get the Voice Memos. As you can tell, the whole entire user interface has com uh, been completely redesigned from the previous version. So you got, yeah, a whole new layout. Um, you basically, you got a new little um, record button here, which is basically the same thing as you would find in the uh, Photos app. And then when you start recording, let's go ahead and start recording a voice memo here. As you can tell, there's a little uh, line right here that'll be... Uh, tracking your sound, so if I make kind of like a loud sound, uh, that really do it there. Kind of click on the phone, there you go. Kind of tap the microphone and everything. Uh, it'll do sound waves um, corresponding to the type of uh, sound that you're making. So if it's a loud sound, there'll be a bigger sound wave, lower sound, uh, smaller sound wave. So it's pretty cool. And you just hit that, stop, everything pretty normal. And then when you want to view the recording, you hit this little done button here. You name it, hit OK, and then it brings up this window where you can play back that uh, voice memo, like so. Your voice memo here. There you go. As you can tell, there's a little uh, line right here that'll be... Uh, and then when you want to uh, delete the voice memo, of course, the trash can, hit delete, and you're good to go. So... That is the new Voice Memos app that Apple has finally brung back in iOS 7, so I'm really happy about that. Let me go ahead and close these two apps here. Whoops. Leave those there. Alright, uh, next is the folders are now transparent, so they uh, uh, correspond with the color of your background. Uh, previously in Beta 1, uh, the folders were a uh, solid gray color. Uh, so now, as you can tell, they correspond to the transparency of the background. So you get a much more cooler look to the folders now, rather than just a standard gray, kind of a boring look as it was before. So very nice there. A little small tweak. Um, next uh, is reminders now show up in the notification center. Go ahead and as you guys can tell, it's still very, very laggy on the iPhone 4. It hardly ever wants to respond to what I want to do. So let me lock it and try it from the lock screen. There we go. Okay. But yeah, reminders now show up in the notification center. Uh, previously in Beta 1, all you would see is the reminders icon here and the reminders text. But now in Beta 2, you can see all of the reminders that you have uh, coming up uh, in your current uh, list uh, that you have created. And then it also, these little colored circles over here on the side, uh, those correspond to the current list that the reminder is in. So you'll know what the reminder uh, is for. So it's pretty cool. So that's pretty interesting. And I'm actually glad that that is there now. Because it was kind of annoying not being able to see the reminders in the notification center. <clears throat> um, next is in the multitasking menu. Uh, when you go in here, previously the home screen uh, page here, uh, it would only show the home screen as it is now. But now, say for example, if you go into a folder and then go into the multitasking, uh, the multitasking will keep that uh, home screen page on the uh, last page that you are currently in and for example here I was in the folder so if I go back it'll jump right back into the folder that I was previously in so pretty cool <coughs> uh, 
next is in the App Store. Um, in Beta 1, there was a option or a section to where you can have wish list and uh, see all of your apps inside of that wish list. But there was no actual way to add an app to the wish list. So basically, what they've done now is added a. Uh, let me find an app. Let's just click this one. Um, they've now added a button for you to be able to add the current app to uh, your wish list. So you just hit the share button here. Uh, now you get this button that says add to wish list. So if I were to click that, it would jump the app right over there, as you can t uh, tell there jumps it uh, right into the wish list uh, and then you can scroll through and find that app that you just added as you can see right here so very very nice uh, that that is now there okay, let me go ahead and close this out because it gets really really laggy if I do not close out applications <clears throat> um, next is a new advertising section uh, under privacy settings uh, which was not previously there before. So let's go ahead and go into privacy and scroll all the way to the bottom. Uh, as we can see here now, there is an advertising section. So when you click on it, it gives you the option to limit ad tracking and reset advertising uh, identifier. That, so that's basically moved now. All right. Uh, next is the buttons in the dialer on the phone app. Uh, previously in beta 1, uh, every time you click on a uh, button, the background would show uh, the actual background. But now it actually uh, it shows a uh, transparent version of the background wallpaper that you have set, rather than showing the actual wallpaper itself, uh, basically in the clear view without transparency. <clears throat> Next is the iTunes, I don't really need to actually show this, but the iTunes radio uh, seems to be actually a lot more laggy in this version uh, on the iPhone 4. I don't know about the iPhone 5 and other uh, iOS devices, but I do know for sure that the iTunes radio on the iPhone 4 uh, is a lot more laggy than it was before in beta 1, so that's kind of a bummer. But hopefully that will get sorted out uh, in the next version of the beta, uh, in beta 3, hopefully. Um, next, uh, the voice control on the iPhone 4 uh, seems to be less laggy, but there are times where it will tend to want to crash. So let's go ahead and see if it, I can do a demonstration of that now. What time is it? The time is 3.46 p.m. And there you go. It actually worked pretty smooth that time. Uh, bef uh, before I made this video, I tested that out, and it actually did make the uh, operating system crash. So be aware of that when trying to use the voice, uh, voice control uh, on the iPhone 4. Uh, next is voicemail now works on the iPhone 4. I'm not exactly sure... Like I said with the voice control, I'm not sure if it works on the iPhone 5 and other devices, but I do know uh, that voice control now works on the iPhone 4. <coughs> uh, and then lastly, out of the features that have changed, is the ability to swipe and see uh, exact timestamps uh, in the Messages app. So previously in iOS 6, uh, you would not be able to see exact timestamps. So, say for example, we have this timestamp here where it says Wednesday, June 12th at 12:39 p.m., and these are all the messages that happened within that time frame. But now, uh, with Beta 2, you can swipe to the left, and as you can see here, you can get a total uh, exact view of every single timestamp for every message that you have sent and received. So, for example, this last one here uh, was sent, or excuse me, received at 12.41 p.m. And then when you let go, it will spring back and you're back to normal. So, very, very useful feature there. I'm glad Apple uh, in implemented that there because that was actually a uh, jailbreak tweak 
uh, that I used to use uh, in iOS 6. Um, and I'm actually glad that they bring it to iOS 7 because it was I kind of use that uh, jailbreak tweak quite often. So very nice. So that's pretty much uh, the main changes in iOS 7 beta 2. Um, another big one is that beta 2 also uh, excuse me, I kind of have a stuffy nose right now. Um, but anyway, beta 2 brings support for iOS 7 to the iPad. So, in beta 2, uh, people that want to test iOS 7 on their iPads can now go ahead and do so uh, in uh, beta 2. So, very nice there. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if I missed anything or if you guys find any uh, new changes in iOS 7 beta 2, uh, make sure to comment them in the comment section below. And so, me and other viewers will be able to see those changes so yeah once again hope you guys enjoyed this video um make sure to hit the subscribe button and thumbs up the video and like i said comment below if you have any comments or if you have found uh any new changes uh, that i did not cover in this video so once again thank you guys for watching and peace out till next time